really interesting you say that, Matt. How, what, the listeners are going to love to hear, how do you cope with that? And what are coping strategies to be able to deal with that? Because there'll be a lot of people listening thinking, I'm being asked to do things for my boss that I'm not yeah. comfortable with, or I'm being asked to go to industry events that I don't want to go, or I'm hoping the, ca- the client cancels and I can do it over Zoom or, or Teams or whatever the case may be. I don't have to go into London or whatever it is. How do you cope or how, and how could you share with the listeners of some coping strategies that, that could work for them? Um, <clears throat> you know, you, you, you've got to get yourself out of your, out your comfort zone and that's certainly something I've, I've learned to do. It's not easy. You know, the, the level of self-doubt and nerves is, you know, is, is large, it's palpable. It will, it will, you know, it will make you feel sick. Um, <clears throat> Also, you know, if you think about our conversation at lunch, I always give myself a get out clause, which is, hey, look, I might go blank. My mind might stop working. <laughs> you know, I might get nervous. I might, you know, I might not, you know, this conversation over lunch is easy, but you put me in a situation where you like go and my brain, it's like somebody pulls the plug out the bottom and everything empties out. You know, I'm not naturally a talkative person. You know, people might joke, my friends will say, you know, it's hard to get much out of you. Now, I will, I'll be the person that sits there in the corner and looks and listens and takes in what other people are doing. But I'm not the one that's going to jump forward to try and talk. It's not a natural state for me. So this for me today is, you know, another example of how I try to kind of say yes to something and then figure out, unless somebody gives me a get out of jail free card, which is I can't make it, I feel sick, COVID, whatever it may be, I just have to figure it out in the day i'm terrible at preparation i can't do all of that so i just have to turn up and do it i love i love your honesty matt now taking all that into account yeah why the bloody hell did you leave softcat mm-hmm. two and a half thousand people mm-hmm. and start a business in this market because most people are going to be listening to this and thinking you're just great you're mad you're crazy you've got a good job yeah Great culture. Yeah. They've got a great brand, all that good stuff. You're ingrained, you're institutionalized. There's definitely safer options to do. So what made you sort of think, do you know what? I'm going to do something complete. And it's not completely different, but I'm, no, going, to, I'm going to burn the boats and I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to go and do another I'm a job and a start. I'm out. I'm going to do a startup. How, how did it happen? Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, Softcat is, it's a fantastic place and like I said, it's, it's, it's been so good to me. It's given me literally everything, my wife, my family, you know, everything that I've got and it's, it's made me what I am today. But if I, if I look throughout my career at Softcap, what it's been is a number of, you know, what is classed as entrepreneurial ideas that we went and executed within the safety net of a larger business. So, you know, the, the great thing about it is that there was... You can't really fail at it because, you know, the the company wants to ensure that the investments they're putting into your ideas are going to execute in something. So we had to ensure it was right on. But you always knew that you had the right people in the business to question you. And when you were running, you were surrounded by some of the best people in the industry, finance, operations, legal, whatever it may be, to help you go and execute on your plan, you know, to to leave and to go and do it in a time when the market is bumpy you know it was a massive risk but huge risk huge risk but you know i I guess my my risk appetite is a bit wavy compared to most people again I i will put it down to how i assume that my brain works i don't look at it as a risk i look at it as we've got a great opportunity in a great market with a great product set and great people you know, yes, there's financial risk. Yes, you know, there's all this other sort of stuff going on. But I don't look at it in that way. And, you know, I'm I'm quite happy with the risks that we take. And actually, I have literally pushed all of my chips in on this one square for it to go and win. But I don't look at it that way. I just assume that it's going to be good. I just assume if we execute on this vision that's over here with the right people to fill in the gaps in the middle, that we're going to be okay. But I don't know. I just don't look at it. I've, I've never been. And, and it drives my wife up the wall because, you know, all, all of my sporting, everything I do, risk just isn't really a consideration for me. 
I don't worry about it. I just kind of get on with it and just keep saying yes to things. Did you not have any, any sort of sleepless nights thinking, should I leave, shouldn't I leave, should I start it? Or how, how did that no. come about? No, no. I, I, I didn't have sleepless nights about that. I've had sleepless nights since, definitely. You know, because, you know, that, that initial honeymoon period of, hey, we've left, we've got, you know, we're going to call ourselves founders or whatever we're going to call it. And, you know, we get business credit cards and we can go and attend events and tell people about our, our great journey. Um, that all wanes very, very quickly because what I realised is that, you know, working in an organisation like Softcat that has all of those great people, they went and did all the stuff that you didn't know how to do. You go and set up a business and setting up a business isn't all about going out and telling people you've set a company up or you run a software business or this or that. It's actually about, I need to set accountancy software up. I need to build marketing collateral. I've got to build email templates. I've got to figure out a go to market. We've got to build out a pricing plan. All these things that previously people had built around us, now we've just got to build ourselves. That gives me sleepless nights. It's the magnitude of things and bits and stuff that need to get done by people in the team or by me who is naturally somebody that is so easily distracted mm. you know i'll be you know we were talking i i yesterday I had to build some data sheets out it'll take me all day because i'll start on it and then i'll be like oh what's that over there and then i'll come back to it and then i'll start on it again oh, what's that over there and all i better jump in i better see what's going on, on linkedin quickly because it's going to bring absolutely no value to the job i'm doing but i better go and check it out anyway so it's uh that keeps me awake how do, you, how do you cope the distractions, Matt? Because you mentioned before ADHD, I have very similar. And it's, it, there's a lot of distractions in, in the world at the moment, LinkedIn, social media, whatever it is. But if you have got a focus, especially when you haven't got that people around you. Yes. Have you had times where you're sort of looking at the screen thinking, what am I doing? What am I doing? Every single day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every, I mean, every single day. And, you know, coming from a world of, you know, even in, in softcat, even when you're not busy, you're busy because, you know, you, you could easily not book any meetings, but have your calendar filled up with things and stuff to do, which gives you a sense of accomplishment. Because every day you're busy, you're doing things. You walk out there and you God, I had like eight meetings. Oh, that was God, busy day. The reality is a lot of those meetings, you're not doing anything in. And coming from that into today, which is, oh, uh. I got no meetings. My phone isn't ringing. My inbox isn't filled up. People aren't asking for my time. You've got to kind of look at it and go, I need to put some effort into realizing what things I need to get done today. And you know, yesterday for me, even building a data sheet, for me yesterday was an accomplishment. I got it done. And actually if I think, if, if I try and draw a comparison between my softcat day and my Arco cyber day. A lot of my softcat, I, mean, I had some super productive days. So I mean, I'm not saying that, but there would be days where I'd be busy, but doing nothing. Mm. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm attending meetings, which I'm not really having an input into that I probably should have declined, but I felt I needed to do it because, hey, it's my job, my position. I probably need to have an input or at least know what's going on so I'll attend. But I could walk out of a day going, God, that was busy doing nothing. Whereas now I have a day where I'm like, I'm not busy like jumping from things to things, but I'm busy because I've, I've, I've achieved something. And the really important thing that I found, you know, with, with setting up Arco is the, the sense of achievement you get from little things, you know, because everything that we're doing, we're doing for ourselves. Every decision that we make, we're doing because it's a decision and a thing that we want to do. The creation of a data sheet, as, as small as it sounds, and it probably take most people half an hour to do, it's still something that has been achieved, that we need, that is going to be used, and is going to be another thing that we've got in our catalogue of, of um, content that we've produced for the company. So it's, it's just a different mindset, you know, and I think there is a, a false sense of security that people get in just being busy all day. You know, you've, you've got to sit back and reflect and go, was I busy or was I effective? Yeah. Because you could be efficiently ineffective. You know, you could sit in meetings all day, have no input, but do nothing. So what's the point? You've just wasted a day. Or you could just go and I'm, I'm going to do one thing. And what is that one thing? Go and smash the hell out of it.